everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Atlantic Theater Company's production of The Secret Life of Bees tells the story of a white teenager named Lily and her black caregiver, Rosaline, who escape a dangerous town before getting taken in by three sisters with a passion for beekeeping. It's a story that tackles racial inequality in 1964 South Carolina and the healing power that comes from finding community. Please help me welcome three of its stars, Issa Davis, Anastasia McCleskey, and Sekhan Simbla. Hi guys! Hey! Hi. I'm so excited that you guys are on this couch today. I, I saw it just last night, so it's all fresh. I'm just so pumped to see your faces up here. It was such a ride. Uh, and just first off, your voices are some of the most beautiful. So just congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yes. We saw you in the audience. They saw me in the audience. We saw you. I saw you. I saw you. You're beautiful. Thank you. Get out. They said I look like Michelle Obama. Yes, yes that's you I, do. I literally, I said, you I do. Do. Do that, Michelle And I like Obama felt girl. bad to be, like, I'm sure you were like, oh, Michelle's here. And it's like, ah, no, it's not. <laughs> Usually you know when they come. Shows, too, the, but she sneaks into shows. Yeah, she comes. Yeah. And you, because you see the Secret Service, they come around. Yeah. yeah, I just had like my backpacks. So. Um, <laughs> but you're beautiful. Thank you, thank you so much. You guys are all beautiful as well. Um, you know, this is something that, uh, a story that a lot of people have come into contact with through either the book or the movie, but what do you guys think is the benefit of making it a musical and bringing it to the stage? That's such a great question. Because, you know, um, you get so many different versions of a story when you're reading the novel and you get to picture it all yourself and you get to take your time and you're reading it in different places. You're sitting on the grass, you're on the train or you're in your bedroom um, or you're in school and then you watch a movie and it's just like all there in the theater, you know, and you're eating your popcorn and you're like trying to get someone to stop texting. <laughs> and then when you watch it in a theater with live bodies on the stage, it's something else because you're part of it too, right? And so it's a conversation between us and the audience. You know, like whatever we're receiving from the audience is also part of what we're giving back, you know? Um, and, you know, there's nothing like music to go directly to your heart. And I think that the, the play the, and the musical, the story is so much about feeling and about soul food. I mean, that's really what... Rosaline, the character that Sekhan plays, and Lily, and really all the characters are looking for is like this sense of healing and this sense of belonging and a way to get by in the, mi in the midst of racial strife in 1964. And I think we actually have a photo of the cast and I, what you're saying really rings true. It felt like a spiritual experience, really. Absolutely. And to say that you guys feed off the audience, that makes sense because you guys are singing these songs and I can feel it, but I'm also like up in my seat and nodding my head and oh, wanting yeah. to be a part of it. So do you feel that spirituality when you're on the stage? Oh, yes. I mean, the, the cast is amazing, we, and we're all connected on this spiritual level and, and these rituals that we've created throughout the rehearsal process. So it's, it's a great bond and connection you know, do this. Yeah, absolutely. I, you see, even in that picture, that's, that's the moment where Rosaline has her breakthrough. And I'm sure people who have read the book or people who see the movie, as she said before, they all have their own imagination, but to have a chance to see it reenacted on stage, to see this big, beautiful statue of, of Mary, our black Mary, you know, it's definitely a spiritual experience. I use it to to uplift me because my track in the show, it's a, it's a rough road, you know? So I use the spiritual part of the show to uplift me and hearing people's opinions about it, hearing how the audience responds to it, hearing them scream, seeing them cry, you know, that's what keeps us and, and just gives us energy so we can keep moving forward. Yeah. And you mentioned Rosaline, who you, you play so beautifully, yeah. um, and she is going to try to register to vote and she is beaten for that. Yes. Um, which, again, this you know took place in 1964, but we're, we're seeing voter suppression now. Even today. Even today. Yeah. So does that inform how you play her? I mean, do you think about what's going on politically now, or are you sort of rooted still in 1964? Well, you know, I can't separate the past from, from now. It's We're all one. Everything that was happening then is happening now. I dedicate my performance to Sandra Bland, a woman who was mistreated and who died as a result of that. And, you know, each night going through the beating and just processing that, you know, I have to really keep myself aware of what's happening in this world right now. We can't separate it. You know, there's no way to just to leave that behind because now we see it even more. You know, we're seeing it on our cell phones, we're seeing it on our social media, and I think it's important for us all to, to, 
to ground ourselves and be able to come together so that a lot of that violence can stop because it, it's, it's a shame that it's still repeating. Well, and I think that's one thing that our show does. Hopefully people take away something from the show where they can go out and make a change and, and do something about what's happening right now that is so prevalent, you know. I, I really connect to May, who you play as well, because she really carries the emotional weight of the times. Yeah. Um, yes. Everybody deals with their struggles differently for her. She internalizes the pain that's going on around mm -hmm. her. Um, so how difficult is it for you to go to that place every night, sometimes <laughs> twice a day? Um, it, honestly, it's not that difficult. Like like Sekhan said, because uh, the, the past and the present, they're, they're parallel. Um, it, it's easy for me to tap into what's happening with Zach, with what happened to my twin sister, April, and everything that she went through. Um, it, it's really easy, honestly. And amazingly, she can sing and cry at the, at same, the same time. time. She's one of those Which like, none of us can do. creatures. Yeah, she's like, oh, it just opens me up. And I then it's cry. like, <laughs> and then her voice is just like, you yeah. know, you know the it, it, like, it loosens everything and then she, up, yes, honestly. She's like, it's a little lubrication. <laughs> I just cry and then I just wail. <laughs> Meanwhile, if I really start to cry, it just locks up. You don't hear anything at all. So yeah, I applaud you every night. <laughs> Tears well, phenomenal, night. especially with the strength that you're singing. I mean, yes. you're not just like whispering in a car. It's like a, you're feeling a. We theme have here. we have a song that we sing um, a cappella with like hand percussion, basically. Yeah, I think like we have a photo over. actually of this. Keep yes. going. Though. Yeah. And that is her oh, moment. She, no, oh, actually, that was another one. <laughs> okay. My bad. But on that, during that song, she is just singing and crying. I mean, we're all singing, but it's yeah, she amazes me every night. Every night. Thank you. Um, and then Issa. Your character, June, is a little tougher. Yes. And I think she <laughs> she has the different approach of what's going on in society. And she's a little harder, a little more skeptical, um, which is really relatable, especially in these times as well. It is. And Absolutely. that's the thing is that, you know, I, I have all these people come up to me after the show and they're like, oh, gosh, you're actually smiling. Like, you're happy. <laughs> and to me, that's that's not the point. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, I am happy. I strive to be happy. And I know my character, June, does strive to be happy, too. But, you know, the way that Sue Monk Kidd, the novelist, wrote these characters and the way that we in the play are really taking them is that we have we represent different ways of responding to pain and injustice. And so the way that um, August um, Lashans, who's not able to be with us today, um, the way that she responds We love is, you, LaShawn. Yeah, we do. We love you. She's our queen. <laughs> the way that she responds is with this loving embrace. She's like, I'm just going to forget about pain, and I'm just going to love everybody, and I'm going to smile through it. And then the way that May responds is that she just is an empath, and she takes it all on, and she cries. She's Atlas holding the world on her shoulders. And then what June does is she says, oh, wait a minute. There's another way. And I'm furious at the fact that just because of my skin color, I'm going to be treated any worse than anyone else. That is ridiculous. The fact that Rosaline can't go to vote. I mean, there's something that happens to me. And we were all moving each other on the stage every time we do this show. But something that I said to Rosaline is it actually makes me angry that she's happy about being able to go to vote for the first time. Because why is she going to vote for the first time? <laughs> why has this actually why is this um, an event? You know what I mean? And so my character is not happy with just taking in this random white girl into our house. <laughs> I mean, she ends up not being random, you know, but actually that's the reason why I'm more angry because she is, in my view, she's a representative of how we value white lives over black lives. And that is what I represent in the show is I'm saying we were, are worth just as much and, you know, so. And you're worried about her bringing trouble in the home, which she they have does a beautiful song they sing. Do, she and LaShawn sing this amazing song called Trouble on the House. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And do you really play the cello? I am playing the cello. Yeah. And I, I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm a bit of, a, you know, like I'm kind of fronting in a way to say I play the cello because I literally just started playing three months ago. So when I'm, I'm up there on stage and I'm playing, actually, you can hear me live. Yeah in three sections and then three other parts I'm miming it. 
But um, that that was a huge part of this character that I didn't know I was actually going to have to take on until right before we started rehearsals. You and it's so beautifully. You're so sweet. Yeah, she I does mean, a great job. I'm really you up do. there. She would, it's, after it's we would leave rehearsal, grader, we'd leave rehearsal and she would stay and rehearse every day. She would take an yep. extra time to rehearse every day. So, And we have another, um, we have two other actors in the yes. show that are playing instruments. Yes. We have Vita, who, who is all their playing lives. the djembe. <laughs> and then uh, we have Mano, Manuel, who is, who is playing the... Uh, the violin. The violin. The fiddle, as we might call it. And the music is so beautiful. Um, the the music by Duncan Sheik is so good. It's, it's got a country vibe. It's got bluegrass vibes. It's got R&B, soul, country. I mean, it's just everything. And we have so much fun singing this music every night. I mean... I think, honestly, like on days where we're all like, oh, my God, because we do eight shows a week. You know, people don't think about that. With theater, we are doing eight shows a week. And the days that we feel tired, the days that we're like, oh, that music starts, you know, that that banjo gets going, you know, and it just it gives us energy. Yeah. Yeah, And I mean, I just have it gives me such joy to watch you sing like sign my name, I also get mad. But I also, <laughs> I get mad that you have to, you know, only be voting for the first time. I sing my little but, song and then they But it down. gives me so much joy to, because I think that that's what this score releases in all of us is the love that we have for music itself. And like, that's what the audience can feel too. And that comes out in the choreography as well. Yes, um, the yes. choreography is light. It's not like you're full dancing, but it, yeah. it is like this African vibe, mm -hmm. Caribbean vibe. Yes. Um, and you guys, re so what was the rehearsal process like to get all of that kind of choreography down? Endless. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy is our dance captain, by the way. I she am. is. So I am. <laughs> we have our choreographer, Chris Walker, and then Stacy is maintaining, keeping us. She I is. am maintaining. She is. I am maintaining. Cracking the whip. She gives us notes. <laughs> Yeah, actually was watching on the monitor backstage last night because because I'm on stage, I can't really watch, but I can see certain things that I, I'm like, okay. Uh. But I was watching on the monitor, and and the show looks great to me. I mean, people are doing their jobs. Yes, yes. dance captain. You yes. had me trying to do this, <laughs> and I realized I needed to stretch before I yeah. did it. Can I tell you when we were first in rehearsal, and Chris, who is he's from Jamaica, he is a professor of I believe Africana studies and movement out in Madison, and he has study the African diaspora and the movement that occurs in the Caribbean, North, South, East, West, Africa, America, wherever the slave trade went. He has studied this movement. He studied the spiritual basis from, from a lot of these movements. And so the first time we were in rehearsal and we were just over to the side learning our music, I saw him at the table and he was like, he was doing his stuff. And I was like, oh, he about to teach us something good. You know, like, I, like, I wish I could just see him do the whole show by himself because he's really tall and long and just, you know, I, we do our best. But yeah. I, I'm so... He makes it look so beautiful. Yeah, he, he makes does. it look so good. Yeah. It just flows yeah. and oozes out yeah. of him. But I'm so pleased that that historical basis is tied to it because people who know about some of the spiritual practices and different things, they see the movement and they know what it is when they come. And I'm so proud of that part. Yeah, yeah. That and then just the way you guys move across the stage and it just like, again, it, it creates this sort of energy in the space that is really addictive for me to watch. Yeah. All of it, yeah. What I love that's in this movement is that it's both bringing forth this entire lineage and this way that people, black people all over the world move. And then it's also this very particular way that this family moves. Right. Yes. And in the same way that we've kind of invented and made something out of nothing with this tradition of of worshiping this black Mary, yeah. we're doing the same thing with our movement. You know, like like that thing. It's it's something that, you know, that just we do, you know? It's really beautiful. Um, I also want to point out the use of the puppets. I think we have a photo of that. That's what the photo oh, is. Oh, yeah. I thought that was yeah. such a genius way to incorporate the bees. And you said Vita was her name? Vita in the middle there. Over there, Vita's yeah. in the middle. She also, the way she plays those drums. Oh, she's yeah. amazing, yeah. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, like yeah, draws yes. you in from jump. Yeah. Like it was so, but then the passion in which she moves across the stage with yeah. the yes. puppets yeah, yeah. Yeah. really creates its own life. She's really made a character. They all have really made characters yeah. um, out of it, I would say. One of my friends said to me, I'm gonna have to pay somebody to follow me around with bees everywhere <laughs> I go. Cause it's very magical, you know? You know, you think about like in that movie Coming to America where there's rose petals yeah. everywhere. It's like bees, you know, the, the connection to Mother Earth, the connection to nature, bees, honey, like really understanding like how a hive works and thinking about that every day, just in our day to day lives, in the story has been very, um, very moving for me. 
I just, just even just, I love so much that I get to use the honey emoji all the time. I'm just like, honey, 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 B, 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 B. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all becoming a part of our natural lives, you know? On that note, the honey, is that real honey that you guys use? No. Okay. <laughs> it is soft soap. <laughs> okay. Soft and soap. Soft soap with, with brown yes. and with yes. It is. It's not coming off their hands. <laughs> yeah, We'd be like I know. goopy. We, yeah. They just experimented with so many different concoctions yeah. and substances. And we were like, what? But then, yeah, the soap works. Soap, but yeah. it does work. But it does. Sometimes there are bubbles. <laughs> and when you're trying to wipe it up after, right. if, if the towel is wet, it then makes it just, just makes more bubbles. soap yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have to shout out Elizabeth Teeter, our young leading lady. Yes. She um she got a little bit of it in her eye one day, and I I was like, oh Lord, my baby, you know, because I I play her nanny, so in my head I'm always like, my baby, Lord, what they do to my baby, but um, <laughs> I you know you grow to love people, you you know, um. But she got some in her eye, you know, just being able to do this show and stay safe and not slip and not, you know, we, we work, we focus every day so that we don't bust our tails. We have each other's back. Yes. Like that, yes. That's a great thing. Every, every every night or every afternoon before a show, we circle up backstage and someone, you know, says, breathe in, breathe out. We, we have our own little ritual in the cast. Yes. And and we always say, make sure we have each other's back. Yeah. You know, if you see something on the ground, tell tell people, yeah. mm-hmm. tell them. Mm-hmm. And there's such, you know, when you talk about honey and that sweetness, you know, even though we have these different ways of being like, I'm a little bit more angry and she's a little bit more depressed, you know, there is this love that has really come through through both in the material and then us as an ensemble. Mm-hmm. Like, we just feel, we do, we feel like a sisterhood, yeah, you yeah. know? And something that someone said um, is that they, just like we're bathing that statue of Mary with honey, she said that she experienced that as a young girl in Gabon growing oh, up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and that it was this blessing. And so I think of that all the time when we do that, that that we're, we're not only blessing this Mary, you know, this this piece of driftwood, you know, but that we're cleansing ourselves and it's this, this act of self-love for, you know, all of us in this sisterhood and this community on stage. And, you know, that, that love is what we're giving to the audience. Yeah. That's something I felt even more in the musical than the movie. Um, I feel like the musical did a really amazing job of taking Lily, and obviously she's the one sort of telling the story. Experiencing it, But she was just put a little off center in the musical, and it was like less, a little less focused on her and more on the sisters. And I thought that was really important. Do you guys, was that something, a discussion that was ever had, or is that just something I received? (laughs) No, okay. (laughs) You You know me, I was all about this, and just, you know, this is just straight up, is that I, we are at a point where we are dealing with white supremacy and understanding what that is on a daily basis, on a structural basis, on an institutional basis, on an individual basis. And I think that, you know, it's 2019, this play was written, I mean, this, this mus- the novel was written in t- 2002. It's set in 1964, but I think we don't necessarily need to see a story with a white girl in the center and then the black people as backdrop. I'm not down for that. Not at this moment, no. And so there's a way in which I think what Lily learns is that this whiteness that she's taken for granted and as a privilege, that that actually gets decentered in the process. She understands that as Rosaline sings to her, it's not always all about you. Great song. Right? <laughs> that song? Come on. That song. Yeah. And, and she learns, you know, through her experience with Zach that, you know, her love for him actually might get him killed because he's a young black boy in South Carolina and that she can't have exactly what she wants, you know? So she's learning that she has to be part of this community and again, decenter her own whiteness in order for all of us to move forward. I think that was key as Lynn Nottage was adapting the book into a musical. I think it's her first time adapting a, a, a book as a musical. Um, I think it was key to make sure that there's that balance it has to be there. I think um, the way that Sam Gold, our director, has even just even with choreography and blocking, you know, setting people in certain areas just to to really um, simplify it and allow people to receive that image and see the importance of each individual on the stage. I think it's been really key to to people being able to receive all the characters as important in the story. 
definitely think that it was something I noticed uh, about halfway through. I was like, okay, I like where this is going. Just because you mentioned, you know, back in 2002, we didn't have the same terms we use now, white fragility and privilege. We didn't use those words back then, but now we do. So we have to be accountable to them, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, we do have a couple of questions okay. before we get out of here. Who That's always first? my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> what y'all want to know? Good afternoon, ladies. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Issa, you talked about the, the book and the film. So what challenges did you have because those, that story of those images in your head and you have to create these roles for yourself. So what were the challenges mm -hmm. for you? That's a great question. And I also want um, Stacy and Sekhan to be able to answer that. For me, um, I, I just read the book and I actually haven't watched the film on purpose. I didn't watch it back then and then I haven't watched it again because I know that I'm very susceptible <laughs> and would be like trying to be Alicia Keys unconsciously. You know what I mean? And and I didn't want that to get into the way of my own process of discovering this character in this new, you know, it's a completely new way of thinking about the story because there's a new creative team. And that was something that our director just made very clear. So, so in some ways, the challenge has been for me to make sure that I can justify everything that my character does without having all of the things that happen in the book happen in the musical. Um, one challenge for me, I, I didn't want to portray May as someone who was autistic or on the spectrum. Um, I, 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 she's emotional, she's an empath. Um, she feels things more deeply and, and she has this amazing relationship with Mary, but I didn't want her to come off as someone who is, you know, um, far out there, I guess. Um, and, and then I didn't want to go too deep. I didn't, I didn't, and that was a challenge for me uh, because it's easy for me to just go deep as, as an actor. But I, I wanted her to find the balance of feeling these things and, and moving through them, moving forward. Um, yeah, so that was my challenge. For me, I, I've done other shows that uh, were based on either real people or based on movies or based on book. And I've always just tried to just bring uh, the truth of the moment, bring that forward. You know, I see how LaShawn's, she's playing the role that Queen Latifah played. Queen Latifah is probably like 5'9 or something. LaShawn's is maybe 5'2". You know, she has to be her own version of August, you know, and I have to be my own version of Rosaline. Um, shout out to Jennifer Hudson. I love Jennifer Hudson. We love know. her. But I have to just bring my own self, uh, bring my own sensibilities to the role. And the times that we're living in inform so much that it makes it not hard to 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 take the story as it is and, and make it make it for the current situation. Next question. Hi, we have an online question from our site, buildseries.com. Uh, how did each of you go about finding your character's voice, both in dramatic and musical performance? <laughs> finding the voice. Um, I would say um, I related so much to the pain and the, the um, actually related a lot to the May character in the, the empathic way of feeling pain, um, that I was able to take that piece of that energy, take a piece of the, 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 the fight the power energy, take a piece of everything and make my character in that way. And then the music, the musical notes, as everything is written, it informs you. So you sing, you know, you sing what's written on the paper, you sing what they've written. And so it, it sort of takes care of itself. You know, when people come to see this story, it's a very simply uh, produced story. The brand of The Secret Life of Bees is huge. There's book, there's movie, all that. But when you come, there's a simplicity to it that makes us able to just step into it. So I would say it wasn't hard um, to bring the personality or bring the character and voice to it. Yeah, to piggyback on what you said, you know, the music does inform a lot in this piece. Um, and for me, one thing that I noticed in the book about May is that she's very observant. And, and, and that was important for me because I am not that observant, okay? And so, <laughs> and so, um, and she pays attention. She sees that she doesn't miss much. And, and I think with, with her being an empath and, and seeing and feeling everything, um, it, I, the voice that I kind of wanted to give her was a calmness, if that makes sense, you know? 
So yeah, that, that was nice to find. <laughs> I thought a lot about my grandmother, um, who I spent a lot of time with in Birmingham, Alabama, growing yes, up with. Yes. And she um, left her home at 14. She was adopted um, because they wanted her once she finished eighth grade, to start working as a domestic, which is what everyone was doing at that time. And she wanted to go to school, so she left home and stayed at the Y. She moved to Birmingham. She lived in the country. She stayed at the Y so that she could go to high school, and she became a teacher. And that's what my character is, is, is a teacher. She's a teacher of history. And so I think a lot about her, and I think a lot about the fact that June has experienced these the same pain that May and August have, where we've lost our younger sister um, to suicide based on the, the depression and the humiliation she felt after a racial, an incident of racial violence. Um, and, and I think about her own like romantic rejection that she's experienced. Mm -hmm. So um, I think about all those things, and I feel like she just kind of fell out of me with all of those things in mind, and yet, I still work on what her voice is. And I was like journaling about this morning, like thinking about how to calibrate each scene. It's something I'm continuing to work on every day in every performance of the show. I, like I said, I really enjoyed the, the musical. Um, you guys just sort of touched on it, but I think what I love most of all is it showed how diverse the black female experience is and can yes. be, and how differently we can go through life and deal with situations. I think we can never tell that story too many times, and so I hope people make the time to go check this out. You guys can catch The Secret Life of Bees now through July 21st at the Atlantic Theater Company. Please put your hands together for Issa Davis, Anastasia McCleskey, and Saquon Black. Thank you. Thank you.